Cool. We're live for a Haiku Conversation Part 2. Whoa! Joe has, hey. Joe has some bright new ideas. Did you ever think you would come to a YouTube video to wa- to look at a fucking PowerPoint presentation? Because I sure didn't. I didn't either. That's There's fun. probably better ways and classier ways to do this, but... I don't have those skills. There might be yeah. classier ways, but I don't know if there's more efficient ways. I'm, I'm excited for how this turns out. Uh, class- yeah. We're going to see how this goes. A classier way was probably like single lined notebook paper and uh, <laughs> colored pencil. I would, I would, I would fill myself giving a PowerPoint on my wall so you could see it. <laughs> and so then we watch her my- react to the PowerPoint. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so yeah, this is a high conversation. Uh, this took me a while. I'm gonna try to refine it later. Hey, I, Joe, I see some points up. I need you to hide it. that bottom bar right there. You you gotta click hide. There you go. Buddy. There you go. There you go. Yeah, uh, but we're gonna start off with just some really quick recaps on characters and like how I first thought about them. So like first off, start off with main character Hinata. High motivation, zero skill, not much leadership, but a lot of inspiration for him. Uh, almost like a lost sheep. His motivation is to fly and to beat Kagayama. Like, we get that right off the bat. Um, and he wants to become the ace by the end of Volume 1. Kagayama, our setter, well gifted, king of court, arrogant, uh, failed hurt leader, supportive leader role, but plays as Superman. Uh, so then we got our team captain, senpai, utilitarian, very scary man, uh, Sugawara. Timid, quiet, not much going on here, but is a setter. Yeah. And then we got <laughs> Ryuji, I mean, Tanaka. Um, very loud, bit of a goofball. And as I said before, big Ryuji bro- vibes. Uh, he's like yeah. become more. He, he does have a nice big bro relationship with, uh, with especially with Hinata. Uh huh. There's that moment when like uh, Hinata and Kageyama are trying to figure out how they're going to practice for the volleyball game. Yeah, and he Hinata. helps them out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I uh, I really took a liking to this character. Uh, I find myself more accustomed to these loudmouth guys more and more because I think they're funny. Yeah. Uh, then we got Tsukushima. <laughs> dick. <laughs> Still a dick. <laughs> yeah. A uh, big shit talker. Uh, but I think that's good to have on a team as you need someone that's able to like throw back stuff at the other team and they start getting in your face. It's which realistic we'll to have the team shit talker where you're like, dude, chill. Yeah, I, I know this guy on yeah. my football team. And then there's this guy, Yamaguchi. Who is this man? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> cool. You'll know yeah. one day. We'll know. Alright, so the first one's view from the top. This is the very end of the uh, this is near the end of the three-on-three three game. Uh, so really what happens in this chapter is Kageyama and Hanada build up their um, build up their combo. Like this is, the, this is the opening phases of it. I also fucked up when I was making this the first go around. Instead of being a proper boy and going from right to left for manga, I went left to right like an idiot. Ooh, I, 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 wa- I was reading right to left. Yeah. I'm glad you brought it up. Uh, until about halfway through, and I corrected myself. Oh, so we're gonna, excellent! Uh, the yeah. worst, the worst thing than messing up is having no consistency. So. Correct. But yeah, this is this chapter's this big classic dumb protagonist we shenanigans that's about going this on, one, didn't we? I, I remember that middle panel, that perfect shot. Uh, did we? I don't think we did. We might. We have. might have, maybe. Or we got something similar. Uh, but I like <laughs> yeah, Gucci being shook in the little quarter here. Oh, man. We get Joe memes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so going through this, there's a point where Dachi is sitting there talking about uh, their teamwork. And this pa- small panel right here about Tsukushima kind of really stood out to me. Like he seems almost like stung and hurt about Dachi talking about this consistency between them and their mm-hmm. teamwork and their efforts. Uh I don't know if that's just him kind of just taking it in or if that just stings with him for some reason. That was just it pointed out to me. Like, it just seems really strange to have that him with that reactive face. I uh, don't like being lectured too much. Yeah, he don't. He does not. Uh, Very fitting. Really, like his character archetype really wouldn't, you know? Yeah. Uh, we get this panel that I really, really liked, and this is like the first time where Hinata is able to surpass that wall. Mm-hmm. Finally, like he's he's literally over uh, 
Sugishima's like reach here and he's able to succeed in getting over him, which is like his big kind of uh motivator and goal in life is to be able to reach over that wall like the little giant. Big emphasis uh, on if you go back, there's a big emphasis on that elongated hand. They yeah. draw hands in a very particular way. But I also like I, the, the shining sun in the horizon in the background. Like you have a bright future, kid. Mm-hmm. Another thing is like flying is a big like uh theme in this thing. In this yeah. manga. Yeah. So I point out a lot of purpose like that. Uh I love the speed lines in this. Uh but that's about it for this chapter. Nice. And at the end of these chapters, it's just like cut out little good boy moments yeah. that I really like. It's just this this face of Kageyawa just being so happy to have like a challenge that like feels good and it's like frustrating. It just made me feel happy about the kid. Good. I like good All boy right. moments is a is a mainstay. I like them too. Alright, and we got some stats about Tsukushima here. Hmm. Um I don't know how y'all feel about this. He likes shortcake. He does like shortcake. He has high intelligence. Uh which is interesting, I think. He he is definitely the smartest one on the team. Yeah. I I think uh, that, yeah. Boy, you might be right. That's sad. <laughs> 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 That's I th- what a I low think bar. both off and on the yeah. court, he is by far the smartest one on the team. Yeah, I guess right. Uh, I guess so. Th- we don't really see a lot of him doing anything but shit talking in this volume, if I'm being quite honest. Well, so that's why I'm looking out for yeah. it more. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, look out for moments where he's pensive or like maybe being quiet because he's thinking about the situation. Mm-hmm. Understandable. All right. That's the end of that chapter. Next up is Birth of a Combo. It's just basically the end of the match. I really like this panel nice. with the wind and the circle. It's the target lock on. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kagayama lost some fingers. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a for our Joe Julian boys. Yeah. Uh, reminded me of someone. Uh, but I just really like the way the author like set this up. I, f- I hate these like cutoffs from the scans. Yeah, One Piece uh, doesn't have this problem as bad. It, it Not as badly. It uh, happens sometimes. It does happen, especially in those earlier volumes, and this is volume two. So uh, that target imagery is used a lot in this show it is, manga. It sh- it shows up a lot more in this volume two. I just like this one in particular because it's the first time you really see it, and it's it's a great point of view shot of Kagayama and what he's seeing and like how everything lines up in his brain. Uh, so we got some good like Sugawara and Tanaka moments in this chapter as well. Like Sugawara here has like. A lot of internal thoughts, mm-hmm. like a lot. Like he has that even throughout the uh, the rest of this volume. So it's just like he's very analytical, um, and it's very fitting for a captain. I mean, for a setter. I thought he was a captain for a long for a long time for some reason. Like uh, Daichi just kind of like fell off my mind. <laughs> I, I think Daichi introduced himself as the captain, didn't he? He did. Yeah. Uh, it's just like he's just so like he just shows up a lot in the chapters. It's like, oh, this is a captain because he's literally thinking about everything that's happening right now. And then once again, we get more Tanaka just being hot-headed and vulgar. <laughs> Joe, you've got animations. Yeah. It's just so much effort. Oh. Uh, but I love all these panels of him just getting rowdy and, like, fighting back and, like, really sticking up for Hinata and, like, this little moment here I really enjoyed. Yeah. Uh, well, so there. I guess the team has two, like, shit-talkers. Like, Tanaka's more yeah. like a defensive shit-talker. Also, he's got a yeah, long I, middle finger. What do you do he with does. that? <laughs> what, what the finger do, man? Uh, that's an interesting point to bring up is that yeah tanaka really is a defensive kind of he doesn't really seek out fights compared to Tsukushima. yeah uh but tanaka does run into them a lot he just doesn't try like he doesn't start them a lot of the times uh i like this imagery of hinata as a bird yeah uh, which i just i just wanted to bring that out uh and then we get introduced to shimizu kyoko, kyoko. Uh, not a lot going on that we know about her so far. She's just very quiet. Mom, I don't know why she's here. <laughs> uh, I, know, I know she's a manager, but I don't know why she's here specifically. She's like, everything has a, uh, there's two reasons. Everything has its reason, but also she's oh, here I'm for sure. some eye candy. Every yeah, team yeah. has a manager. Yeah, I know every team has a manager. It's just it just seems weird to me that you have a female manager for an all boys team. That happens. Uh, in, have you, oh oh, it's your first. I forgot. Yeah, I forgot. Like, it's what? your first. 
You've, but also, like, every team I was ever on in high school only had female managers. Not me. I uh, We had trainers, but not managers. Mm, sucks to be you not having female <laughs> managers. Yeah, it <laughs> does. <laughs> and even the trainers weren't that good looking. Uh, in uh, but in yeah. Sports Shonen, the female yeah. manager is a trope where the female readers with Sports Shonen bring in a large ratio of female readers because it's cute boys doing sweaty things, but... Um, there's always the manager to also help as like a self insert. You can find your mm-hmm. play. Kuroko Basque is really big on that, as I recall. Who's the manager in Kuroko? I don't. She was pretty plain, but like I'm pretty sure there was one, right? Like, oh I, no, she was. I remember who she is. Yeah, she's the coach. She's the coach. That's right. Wow, that's <laughs> even more wild. Uh, we also get interest of Takeda. Who is yeah. the club advisor? Uh, I really like this character because it's a great way to just like introduce volleyball things for the reader, and just like a way for the author to like explain the mechanics of volleyball to the reader. Like it's very obvious why he's here. I just thought it was interesting that different from us, like the schools don't actively like create a schedule for you. Your advisor has to make these practice games that aren't tournaments, like. Be a thing. Yeah, they're mm. a club. They're not a. Yeah, they're not a uh, Texas football school ass sport. Yeah. Uh, so we're gonna have some little segmented moments here. There's a lot of good boy moments. So we just have two of them winning the little competition here. Uh, them pointing out what they need to do from now on. I just really like those. Uh, not this this like monkey in the middle with the water ball was really cute. But then we get these moments with the jackets that I really liked. Part of the team. Uh, yeah, most notably Yamaguchi just being a fucking dork in the background. <laughs> <laughs> like, you can see, he's like, I want to be part of it. And he's just, but like, <laughs> it's like, oh that, man, you're growing up. Isn't that like a perfect imagery of like, so the three boys here are having fun and Yamaguchi's having uh-huh. fun, but he has to do it with a separation of Tsukushima because he's like, I can't be, I can't be too like them because then Tsukushima is going to make fun of me too. And he's yeah. my um, And then we have this moment here that I really like where the two of them are like still in that, that like uh, that nervous moment where they have to still behave like teammates. So they look at each other in the eye to like get their timing down for the thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I just thought there were some wonderful moments in this chapter. And then we got Yamaguchi. Um, <laughs> Based off good boy points, this man's a goober. He is a goober. Uh, he's also the Fire Emblem character that you can just kind of shape whatever you want. <laughs> oh, I thought this was such a... <laughs> That's so funny, dude. Um, yeah. Not quite. Yama- Yamaguchi... I'm Cyrus, just going off the stats because stats are so balanced. I like, uh, okay. But, but Cyrus has like a high growth rate. Yamaguchi becomes focused. Oh, uh, um, okay. But he's a good... Bo- I like your uh, your relation with his current worry. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. Next up is Ricky Nerves, and this is the start of the Blue Castle game kind of arc. Uh, so yeah, for the announcement practice game, we have a game with a prerequisite and strategy for the game. Basically, they have to play uh, Kageyama the entire time. That's the whole goal. Like they they can't sub him out, and they have to have him there the entire time because Sucks as it turns Sugi out, or Suga. <laughs> yeah, uh, since um, it's like. Former classmates go there. That's the reason why. Um, I miss in here. Like, there's the struggle between Sugi and Kageyama. Now it's beginning to like become apparent that only one of them could be on the court at a time. Yeah. Um, so it's just like Sugi wants to look out for the team. So he's like willing to like let Kageyama get that spot and let him try out if it means it's best for the team. And that shows up later in the volumes that we haven't gotten to yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, but like Kageyama is definitely jealous of Suga's ability to like interact with the team like that's something that he's really missing and that he's kind of that's his like biggest like uh self-esteem issue is that he wants to like be the leader of the team but he realizes how bad of it he is does that make sense Mm -hmm. like that's that's his big jealousy that i got from reading these panels uh and we got our blue castle we got our blue castle lineup here uh we got kanaka hinata swarma Tsukushima. Swarma. Yeah. Kageyama. Uh, I have a question, though. 
Who the fuck is this? Oh, that's an Oshida dog. <laughs> and Oshida's the goat. He literally didn't show up for the past volume. And he was half. there. He was in the background. He just didn't get any time to shine. I I don't think in I, I think in Oshida. <laughs> has like a couple lines in the anime during like certain b-roll footage where yeah. like he's like i'm sure glad i'm not those guys on the court yeah. <laughs> uh he's a set yeah he's a second year um yeah hana is just really nervous uh about this whole game because <laughs> it's his first game and yeah he uh he throws ends up throwing up on uh Tanaka on the way to on the his, game. On his dick. <laughs> yeah, on his dick. I like his sleepy oh. face there in the top. That's really cute. Yeah, just, I the way this man draws expressions like really evokes what it's like to like be in his, that moment. Oh, his this name is, is Furudate. Put some respect on the man's name. Um, Furudate. Yes. Oh yeah. Uh, I like his uh, running running theme of, like, he wants to stay in the court for as long as possible. That's been very apparent, the, these first two volumes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a that's also a really good point, because that's the biggest nerves about him, is that he wants to stay out there, and that's what he's afraid that if he does bad, he's yeah. going to get taken off the court. Uh, some more good boy moments. There wasn't really a sequence here, just a lot of faces that I liked. <laughs> uh, I like this realization, the Grace decoy. Uh, oh. Uh, <laughs> it reminds me of that panel and we never learn where Fubio comes out and she sees it's uh what's this Yugia and she's like oh yeah um <laughs> the greatest decoy is it's cool that they coined this now because that is like that is the Hinata thing I think um yeah yeah it, it's uh it's a phrasing that'll come back yeah it's a uh, it definitely comes up later uh but we just got some little nice goof moments here and there that I just wanted to point out uh, then we got uh, Kyoko stats. She can uh, jump. Can, Why can she, she jump? She can jump and she can s- fucking speed. <laughs> yes. So, um, this happened in the most recent arc. She used to be on the track team for like two years. Oh yeah. Remember? Uh, she is. She is a hurdler. Remember Joe? First time. Yeah, I remember. No, uh-huh. no, no. Th- but like Willer. Willer. She's a hurdler. That's yeah. why she's got these stats. I, f- I completely forgot about that background from her. Uh, I like how her weight has a as of April third, <laughs> April third year of high school. Yeah. You know, like all oh, the weight that's as of this date. You know, mm. mm-hmm. Fair. it was in the other ones too. Uh, okay, like, uh, what's his name? Uh, it was either Yamaguchi or uh, Glasses Boy was like one fifty one. Oh. I guess it's that way. They don't have to. The writer doesn't have to manage like their in between match weights or whatever. Her favorite yeah. food looks deli- sounds delicious. It does sound delicious. Tempor- yeah. that sounds- I'm not big into shrimp, but like replace that with some other seafood, and I'm in. All right, reunion of failure. Basically, they get to the place, uh, they get to the location, they have some small smack talk with the other team, and the game gets started. Hey, how- hey, hold on, go back. Why does this look okay. like the main? No, that's too far. <laughs> the fir- the first page of the chapter. This one. Why does this look like the main character from Bakuman? Oh, that one? Yeah. That you're right. Also, that, that girl that, on the that girl on the right looks very familiar to me. She hmm. kind of looks like Anne, but not really. No. Uh, also crows. She might come back in this series. I keep an eye yeah. out for someone like her. I'm not I'm not 100% sure if that's her. Okay. Uh, so they're at Blue Castle and they run into Yutaro Kendachi, former teammate Kageyama's. Uh, he has this like survivor superior mentality like he feels like he's better at volleyball because he survived kageyama in middle school <laughs> surviving kageyama yeah um so he gives us this vibe that he's better because he's like he feels like he went through hell and back uh there's a lot of imagery of crows in this chapter which i thought was really cool because of the curse on a crows yeah uh and that relates back to like uh hinata and flying and the sensation of freedom uh, and I just like this whole panel here where it's not going to say we'll pick you clean. Mm. Like a the, gang, the, <laughs> the gang walking up. <laughs> this fucking face he makes every time he's about to start shit it gets me every time. Maybe he does pick some fights after all. I Well, to be fair, they were walking around the corner and heard them shit talking. Oh, uh, there you go. 
that's what, that's what led up to this moment. I, I just cut that out because I didn't feel like going over it. All right, so we got a little Segoy boy moment. That's not how you spell Segoy, uh, Jesus Christ. I, I'm terrible. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Anyways, so at this point, they're talking about uh, Kageyaba and just how of a terrible setter he is. And so Sugishima and Tanaka are shit-talking back, and they eventually... Kadachi passes by and mentions it to him. Just like starts giving him shit. And he says, I'm curious to see what the kind of reign the king has over at Kurosano. He's like, all right. <laughs> and just walks off without saying anything. Um, I really like that moment because he's just kind of growing past it. He's learning to just let it roll off his soldiers. And I like this little moment here where the two of them just give him a pat on the back for just not fighting <laughs> back about it. They smack him. Yeah. Even Tsukushima smacking him. I like how uh, Tsukushima and Tanaka are combining their smugness. Yeah. <laughs> Look at Tanaka. He's like, oh, what are you going to say? <laughs> <laughs> uh, just every time. And then Dachi has a, that's the second time Dachi has stopped him like yeah. in that, that pose because he did it through the net in the game. Um, it's really like it. I like this moment because it, it really shows the growth we've had for Kageyama. The past like volume and a half, which I think is really good. Man, the uh, best moments in this anime slash manga are like right before the matches start. Yeah. Speaking of bathroom time, bathroom time. <laughs> uh, so, they to, so they go to the bathroom, and uh, Hidan runs into them, and he's like, "Oh, I recognize this guy. He was in the he was in the fight." And so they're talking about uh, they're talking about Kageyama, and it's, what's not the defense. Yeah. And Hinata, well, Hinata like, it's like, yeah, he's kind of a jackass. Uh, but then we kind of have this little Blackbeard uh, Luffy moment where the, you think they're going to say the same thing, but say something completely different, like the complete opposites, which I thought was really good. Because now we're seeing that Kageyama really has changed compared to when he was on the uh, his middle school team. I don't like the meme you've added to this page. <laughs> <laughs> it took me a while. <laughs> Maybe this uh, was a mistake. Maybe. <laughs> maybe all memes were a mistake. Uh, but I thought this was a little good little bathroom boy moment. All right, and the game gets started. Damn, look at that block. Yeah, uh, you. I wanted to bring this panel up because you mentioned fingers before yeah. in the wall. Jesus. So uh, it's just like, look at these. Look at these. They're like alien look, hands. Look at these chonkers. I know. Like, no, chonkers <laughs> imply like width. These are longers. Yeah, these are longers. Uh, um... This is a reoccurring thing that shows up in the next batch too. I really like this line starting lineup deal because we get like faces and we know who's what. Yeah, the enemy teams play. all get a little bit of characterization at least. I uh, I didn't do all these boys because no. no. Don't. So the way I'm doing, it, yeah, uh, basically if like someone gets like a pretty long panel with their name on it, that's when I'll just kind of like break down my first impressions for them. Otherwise, I'm not gonna. Do it for every single well, one. The of them. first impression is that this boy vibing. Yeah, this boy is vibing. I don't know. He's this boy, maybe. Yeah, it's probably him. But that boy is vibing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh. So <laughs> during the whole match, <laughs> they go through this. They're they're really struggling here, and finally Tanada's turn to serve, and he royally screws it up. It loses um, the set too. That's perfect. He loses the set too. So it's a double whammy of. Hitting Kageyama in the head and being the cause of the lost set. Like, it's the <laughs> worst possible thing he could do. Like, the, that's, the a, that's definitely a beauty of this sport to choose to do a manga over because you're gonna have, there's gonna be cycles and characters mm-hmm. are gonna be in positions that they're not as comfortable with, especially as the, uh, the hitter. Yeah. Yeah. I, I uh, I've noticed that too, especially during. But I was, it was really funny because, like, while I was reading this, I was like, man, uh, their defense isn't so hot based off, like, what I was reading. And then the coach mentioned that. Uh, so I really like the fact that he's able to, like, convey, like, what's happening on the court. It's intentional. It is intentional. But, yeah, uh, but that's the end of the chapter there. Just some more little good boy moments. Uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> this this little shit, this little face here by Tanaka I love. Uh Tana just trying to go all out. I like Dachi's <laughs> Are you shitting me? <laughs> <But when> I, <laughs> That's relatable, <laughs> man. Like it was I yeah. had it. 
<laughs> like, are you kidding me? You're- this I also really liked, where Kyoko just attached on Soldier. Oh, great. It's- She's killed him. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's, it's <laughs> Tanaka coming out the corner like, <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> Heard you were talking shit. <laughs> it's uh, more like a uh, the manager touched Hinata sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so we have Takeda now. So here's the thing: in the previous stats page, it says intelligence is when it comes to volleyball, but this boy has four intelligence. But then on another page, it said he had no like knowledge of volleyball. So I'm very confused on the intelligence stat. Stand now. stats. Yeah. Move on. Just move yeah. on. Yeah. Just move on. Blah. Uh, back to normal. Nice. It's the fall. Yeah. Blah. All right. So I really like this moment. This comes really early in the chapter. Uh, <laughs> Kageyama comes back to Hinata. He's like, hey, Ban, you worried? You probably did the worst thing you possibly could. So get over it. Just get back out there and playing. And yeah. I really like this moment where Tanaka's just like, we know you suck. Don't worry about it. The whole point of the game, this practice game, is so we know what's wrong. It's a and practice. we can figure it out. Yeah, it's a practice game. Um, it really makes me like Tanaka more because Tanaka really is like, I get it. You're not good at the get ball game yet. It's fine. It you makes me like it. Hinata more because he's not anno- like yeah. he's not annoying about this. Mm-hmm. It, it's just a good reaction. Like uh, Hinata, when I first got introduced to him, like you could compare him to like a hyperactive Naruto style character. Um, mm-hmm. But he's pretty chill. Yeah, I guess hyperactive say- is more Asta too these days. You mean Hinata or Tanaka? Hinata. Okay, just wanted to make sure. But yeah, I uh, I just really like this interaction. Like, it just makes Tanaka grow a lot for me. Uh, I forget why I have this panel on here, but I think it's just the same thing. Like, we know you're stupid. Like, we know what's wrong. Don't worry about it. Just keep playing the game and just do as best as you can. Uh, that's kind of it for that chapter. There wasn't really anything else than just them playing volleyball <laughs> and playing the set. Uh, but I really like this moment here. Mm, uh, that's really good. Kageyama hits the ball too high and Kadachi thinks that he's gonna shout at him. He's like, nah, my bad. My mistake. Don't worry about it. Nani. <laughs> and then um, I'll, I'll, <laughs> Tanaka. <laughs> oh, keep going, Joe. This is just crazy. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> so I couldn't tell for this. Either they were really just trying to get on Kageyama's like, nerves or Tanaka was trying to redirect some of Kageyama's hate towards him instead of Hinata at this moment. No, uh, they're trying to shit on Kageo, especially Tsukushima. <laughs> oh, Tsukushima, no doubt about it. I, I could totally see. Uh, <laughs> Kageyama, though, was the one I was like, hmm, maybe he's trying to cover for Hinata a little bit and, and give him some breathing room. Uh, but I just like these moments in general. Uh, so an interesting team. Uh, the decoy plan goes on into effect. The opposing coach does an analysis, and the game finishes. Um, this is actually game two, I realize. I I didn't do everything in, like, in one night, so I thought we were still in game one. Um, but we get a nice overview about Kageyama's growth. And basically, the coach is saying here is that Kageyama need, needed Hinata in order for him to understand what he needs to do as a setter. Yeah, that makes sense, because Hinata has his own flaws, and Kageyama, if he adjusts, can land <laughs> very good synergy with Hinata. So the yeah. onus is on him to adjust first. Challenge. Yeah, so it's it was, it was just a really good moment of like just kind of reinforcing that fact. Like this Kageyama is really grown compared to what you thought of him and what the other team. It's because it's like their whole game plan seemed to handle the fact like oh he's just going to haunt the ball the entire time, and now it's just kind of ooh, gone out the window. Um, and now we have growing tensions uh, between these two. Uh, this is just a little moment that I really like. Uh, they basically get swapped to the front. And are the two middle blockers for this section. And they're Tsukishima is just shit talking the entire time towards Kageyama. Yeah. It just, it just leads to this nice little panel <laughs> 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 right here. And then this is uh you know what's his name? Uh, I, I don't know who this man is. Uh you know Shida. You know Shida. <laughs> yeah. And then you get this panel. <laughs> yeah. The 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 author knows. Yeah, <laughs> I was. I literally thought, like, who is this man? And then the author even knew I was thinking Look at it. These meaty uh, fucking get... hands. Oh, yeah. hey, it's the boy. It's this boy. 
Uh, he's a pretty boy. He's Mr. Cool Kid. He kind of feels like a douche in this chapter. I, oh. There was just something about him. He feels like a oh. douche in every chapter. Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, That's called this a, is their a adequate, uh, adequate introduction to the character. Yeah. Ooh. Um. But yeah, this is their star setter. He had a small injury. So it makes me think like when they made this arrangement for Kageyama to be in there, that either they wanted to just go up against Kageyama because they kind of wanted to be mean, or they knew their head setter was going to be injured for a time being, so they didn't want to like make it feel like a mismatch when they put in their second setter. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Uh, but here's some good boy moments. Tanaka is like day in the sun. Is able to get hit off. I just really like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he, uh, he has this reoccurring joke where he doesn't like it when there's a guy that takes all the girls' attention. <laughs> yeah, I it's mean, I it's never fun. It's never fun. I like. Wait, go back one. <laughs> yeah, I like. Uh, Hinata is still swinging like with his eyes yeah. closed a little bit, which is perfect. <laughs> he yeah. doesn't know yeah. if he's gonna hit it or not. So yeah, there's a there's a panel that comes after this that I didn't put in there, but I'll bring it up. But like Hinata's like, oh man, I thought I really thought I was, I was gonna get the ball that time, and that's um, the point, right? I, yeah, Kage is like, good. That's why I want you to feel. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, their their ultimate decoy strategy is like really keen in effect this chapter and does a really good job of uh they do a really good job and they basically win this they win this game because of it uh and move on to the third game so now we get Inoshita stats um, who are you who are you <laughs> uh this this boy is just like a wallflower splints in to the back all right next up we have versus the great king uh, basically, this man takes the court. This is the chapter, I believe, that made me go like, "Oh man, this is fucking great." <laughs> this this chapter in particular. Uh, basically, this guy's a killer serve. Like that, like he dominates with it. Like, look at this panel. Like, yeah, it's so cool, powerful. It's like, yeah, it's extremely powerful. The lines, the darkness, the way this guy's the eyes sleeves. look. It's just, yeah. Like you could see so much the, the airwaves, there's so much force going into it. It's awesome. Um so there's a lot of moments going on here that just summarize like, all right, here's how we gotta adjust, here's what we need to do to like conquer the situation. Uh Lachi, like spreads himself out to take up more room because yeah. he's the only one. I, I love reason. this little defensive range panel. That's yeah. really good. Yeah. Uh but like we like it forces them to like just Adjust. I thought the author does a rub of like making like what everyone's head spaces and explaining everything. And it makes you feel like it makes it feel like this situation is incredibly dire because a weakness has been exposed as a team, which is that they can't receive properly right now. Um, but we get this moment. So during this, uh, the the center has hit a ball that's a lot more accurate rather than hard. So they, they're able to get like a free ball going back over to the other side. And so they're setting up for a spike. Oh, wrong way. And Hinata jumps up and blocks it. Or, or like is able to like finger tap it. And I thought it was just a good moment that at this point he's the wall for the first time. Like yeah. he gets to be on the end of uh, blocking someone's scoring. Which, uh, um, yeah, Hinata is getting in on that defense. So his skill set's growing. Bitch. Up. And then we get this, which I thought was fucking awesome. Yeah, um, that's great. He, we have these great movement lines of him. I see you went in the right direction here. this time. I did. Yeah. This is the moment where I was like, oh, I should go this way. Uh, where he's running around. It's just like the movement is just so cool in these panels. Uh, it made me go like, it was just hype for me. Like the fact that like something in Hanada's brain, like it's like the athletic instinct like clicked in his brain. He knew exactly what he needed to do. Right? Yeah, I mean Haikyuu is fucking hype, man. Like it's Yeah. Sports manga are hype. That that is what it's all uh, about. We we should watch the anime. <laughs> I bet this moment's great. Yeah. It's anime. all great, Joe. It's all great. Oh, I'm sure. Uh I like the speed line, how the ball's moving so fast that you can see through it to his face. That's pretty cool. Uh, 
Yeah, and then he whizzes it straight by his head, and that's the game-winning point, which is kind of a great book into it because he now is the one that gets the point that went that that ends the entire match. Yeah, and he's also caused them to lose the first game, which I thought was a really nice little book into that. Indeed, uh, and it feels earned. It doesn't feel like overly shown in. So I was like, oh man, that was a great little moment. And yeah, they were able everything to- feels earned, uh, which I think is a really good strength of Haikyuu. Yeah, so I just was like, man, I feel good. I'm, I'm glad the boys won this game. Um, just some good boy moments. Uh, Tanaka just being upset about the girls saying some things. But we also had this moment where uh, uh, just this afterglow of the win, Hinata, that I really like this panel. He's not even as hyped as you would expect. Like, he's just calm, which I think is Yeah, like, it's, it's like that adrenaline is just, like, now wearing off of him. And he's like, yeah. he's like okay, all right. It's over. <laughs> like he's starting to calm down. Uh, then this is Okiwala, who is fucking the world. Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> he's got those good stats. Yeah, he went to say hi to the curse. this cute manager. She totally ignored him. Surely she was just shy. It's no big deal. Really, doesn't <laughs> bug him at all. Nope. Nope. Uh, <laughs> all right. Now we got chemical reaction. The match ends. Rivalries are made, and more bathroom breaks. Uh, we get a nice little like review of what just happened. So that's something interesting about this uh, manga that I noticed is that the author, a lot of times, the first page is like a recap of what happened at the very end of the last chapter, which yeah. like compared to One Piece, like it's just interesting that we go back through like what just happened. It's not uncommon. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just like I felt this panel. Hey, Joe's in there, boys. <laughs> uh, He's a haiku stan. Yeah, He's there. Will it spoil a little bit of shut the, up? Where haiku is the shut moment? up! No, because <laughs> that is a spoiler for anime watchers. So be quiet. Okay. Uh, but this is—it's just like, oh, hey, Will mentioned this. Hey, look, Brazil. Yeah. Uh, so we get more bathroom moments. Um, basically. Now Kageyama and Kadachi are facing each other in a bathroom. Um, bathroom time. The, yeah, basically just saying, like, I'm going to win. It's just normal shown and stuff. But this is the important part at the very end, is that Kageyama said we. Like, Kageyama is acknowledging the team as a whole as the victors, not himself. Yeah. Well, it's that's, just his, really- that's his character arc over. <laughs> like, yeah, we're done. What a big what a big step forward already. Jeez. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And then yeah! we, see, we see this boy. <laughs> Woo! We see Brim Boy. Oh man. Uh, that's where this chapter ends. Uh, I know who this boy is. He's I, got I the broomstick. He does have the broomstick. Um as for good boy boy, it's not a lot, a lot here, but we have this that I really liked. <laughs> <laughs> they're having this. So this is directly under this moment here where they're having this show go down. Uh, and then there's Hinati. Hinata, just like do do do. Hinati. Party time. I'm the ace. I just thought it was really funny. Uh, you're right. They go to the bathroom a lot. I'm glad that bathroom time is an official part of this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Kendachi. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> this is the last chapter of the volume. Oh boy. Go. Yeah. What comes next? Uh, so we had this moment here with Oki. I, I don't know how Oikawa. I don't know how to say this man's Oikawa. name. Oikawa. Oikawa. Uh, he's a methodical meanie. Like he wants to dominate and destroy them. Like I feel like this is like Kagayama at the at the super level. If he just continued to be his self centeredness and just wanted to win. Didn't they, isn't there like a, a link between them? Like they played in the same middle school. Yeah, this is yeah. this is his classman in middle school. So yeah. like when he was first year in middle school, he was a third year, and now he's a third year in high school. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know like how long that rivalry could really last because it's kind of a situation where he's on the out. He's he's leaving next year. I mean, we're just at the start of the year. I'm sure there's like 400 chapters of where this could go. Oh well, I don't know. Maybe, <laughs> but we'll see. Um. So yeah, broken mops and lord up drops. Nice. Uh, yeah. So we have this moment here where they're talking about this mop being broken. Uh, and I think this is a good like metaphor for the team where it is right now. Like 
it's it's a broom. It can sweep up the playing field, but it's broken. And there's just there just needs to be a way to heal it and put it back together. <laughs> I guess and this relates not the again. strongest metaphor I know. Not the, yeah, bops can't heal themselves. <laughs> oh, but that's that's just why I read here was just like the team right now is kind of broken. It's not really put together. We're missing the, some key players. Yeah, uh, and then also we learned about there was this like prestigious uh, coach, uh, Hukai. coach, yeah, Hukai. That used to coach here at the school, and that's kind of why Kageyama wanted to come here originally. But then he literally like fell down, had like an incident, and just couldn't teach anymore after he came back. So uh, he's no longer here. But Takeda right now is talking to a Yukai Kun, um, who is not that same guy, but is yeah. someone else. I forgot that we haven't been introduced to Yukai yet. Let's nah, not officially. And little, yeah, and we're discussing libero, so we're gonna get a libero. Yeah, so I really like this because it, it kind of it, it's like that one piece where like we need a roadmap of where we're going next, so we know what to expect and kind of like get hyped up for. Yeah, you know, like a Doctor Stone roadmap. Yeah, so it's kind of so that's like one thing that about like I feel like with uh, sports manga, like you can just kind of make your season very nebulous in its length and not really it just kind of fill it in with games but i like that we like all right we need a libero we need an ace then we need to go to like these the summer inter high to competition and then the nationals like we have like things in our brain put in there that like these are the things we should be looking out for and be expecting down the road yeah i'm sure it'll happen in a jiffy yeah oh yeah i'm sure this isn't like one piece seeds that'll only bloom in like hundreds of chapters yeah uh so then we get introduced to this boy. Um, this panel right here was just enough to immediately like this guy uh, with that shirt. I just thought it spoke volumes about who this character was. He's um, a god. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I really like that the the author is using the sound effects to show the, the differences in like their hits rather than just the. Yeah. Uh, the, the speed lines and everything because like the sound he gets a, a, a nice boom but now it gets a blat <laughs> yep like and, it, and like the thing is like from playing some volleyball and like watching it I know what that looks like and yeah I can like. picture that like the clean like short boom versus like a splat yeah because I've, I've heard arms. both yeah that, those blaps are not fun by the way they are painful if they hit you pretty hard get blapped yeah um, and we get introduced to you, Nishi, Nishinoya. Nishinoya. Yeah, I uh, I like this boy. I like him a lot. Man, the art uh, style has changed so much. He looks so different these days. Yeah. Yeah. More importantly, he's shorter than Hinata. Wow. Which is crazy. But he's, wow. play, he's playing the proper short boy position. Correct. Uh, but this is kind of like the big missing key piece that, they're, that the team needs. But I don't think it'll be enough because I think you still need to have like a well-rounded like be able to have anyone like defend and receive um and then finally we have some good boy moments here we have Hinata like just being happy they got to play a game that they won and like fell accomplished during that whole thing and he was able to receive a uh, uh, serve which is nice yeah yeah he got that blap and well more importantly like the two of them are actively working on trying to like improve themselves in these fields. Yeah. Which I really like to see. Um, but that's everything. Woo! That's it. We did it. That's volume and two, baby. Time. Let's see how much time is saved. Uh forty three minutes, so that's a bit of a time save. Yeah. Uh, but I, I like your memes quite a bit, Joe. I felt lots of other too. Those are very strong. Uh yeah. cool. I like this format. Yeah. Uh, uh, start watching time to start watching the anime, Joe. Oh no, <laughs> I can't do both. Joe can't do uh, both. He's doing uh, it for the first time. You so can do both. I, no, you didn't do both. How could you say this like you did? Who is this boy, I do <laughs> One Piece anime and manga and manga. Uh, well, okay, but you're not catching up. Like, yeah, I mean, Joe isn't Bradley. We're not going to be doing one episode a month. You know, <laughs> like the the idea would be like at least two. Yeah, yeah. Are you still recording? Yeah. Sure. Okay. I said bye. Okay, bye everyone. Yeah. Yeah, I was just bye. Goodbye. Bye. See y'all later. Cool.